Hey everybody, Norm over here, and it is Thumpin' Thursday, and I've got my buddy Roberto Valley, one of the greatest bass players ever, and I always say that, but it's true, and I know good bass players because when I was a kid, I grew up with maybe the greatest of all time, Jacko Pastorius, and this is a Fender Custom Shop Jacko Pastorius fretless may bass. I, may I open this thing yep. up for you, man? And uh, I grew up with Jacko, Whoa. and wow. I remember when he had his first bass, which was a replica of this, or this is a replica of that. I remember he pulled the frets out of the bass and fiberglass the fingerboard, and that was kind of the thing. Uh, for him and that kind of really opened up his sound and I believe the first tune that he played on it fretless was with one of my idols Little Beaver in Miami who was like one of the greatest uh, R&B and blues guitar players and they did a thing called I Can Dig It Baby and I think Jocko walked in with the bass, the first time he played it fretless on a, on a, any tune, and it's really cool. If you get a chance, you gotta check it out. Little Beaver, I can dig it, baby. I didn't know that. I man. love that That's, song. That you got you got that deep connection with Jocko. Well, we were kids, yeah. and you know we used to love R and B, and uh, you know I mean Jocko, as much as he was into jazz, he was also very much into R and B, and. Uh, he loved James Brown, and he, he played loved, drums too. He did he play like, drums. He played yeah. really good. That drums. was actually his first yeah. instrument, and um, and then he went to the bass, and he ended up playing with people like Wayne Cochran, and uh, Ira Sullivan, and people like that in Miami. But his band was called Woodchuck, and it was a three-piece band: organ, bass, and drums. It was Jocko. Billy Burke on organ and Bob Herzog on drums. And Bob Herzog would sing. And they would do like these old R&B tunes. Um, and they would kind of start out just grooving, playing the tune like a regular R&B tune. Next thing I knew, they were out in the ozone someplace. <laughs> and they used to do a tune I remember that I really loved uh, by uh, a guy named Bobby McClure called Peak of Love. But uh, when I was playing with Bobby Caldwell in Miami, we would do a lot of uh, gigs my band, Cat Mandu, and Woodchuck. And we do these gigs where we play together. And every once in a while, at the end of the night, Jocko would jump up and he would sit in with us and we would do It's Your Thing by the Isley Brothers. And believe it or not, I actually used to sing it. Uh, you know, it was probably the low light in uh, Jocko's career. Oh, come on, ever, Norm. If it was ever a, a table, no. you'd probably have to destroy it somewhere. <laughs> but, but it was a lot of fun, and we did a lot of gigs. Uh, we went to Key West together with both bands, and we played at these two clubs. One was called The Flying Machine, and the okay. other one I think called The She, and both in Fort Lauderdale. Wow. And so and we, we played m for months, uh, the two bands together. And it was really cool. I mean, with Jocko's band, all the greatest players in town would come to see those guys. For us, I'm not sure who came to see us, but right. we were actually a bigger draw than he was because, you know, for some reason we looked like a band. And the, Jocko back then looked very kind of nerdy and straight, didn't point drink, Dexter. didn't do drugs. He was a point Dexter. Was, was he, when did he, like, was he like born a phenom or, or did it did it come a little bit man, over time? When I when we first heard him, everybody in Miami was talking about him. And, Jocko, uh, Jocko, Jocko. Yeah, it yeah. was something else. But, you know, we kind of almost thought that he would never, uh, you know, people wouldn't find out about him uh, until he ended up with weather report and just a funny quick story is uh his wife um went out and saw this guy i think it was bobby economo and who was a uh, i guess a producer for uh a big record label and bobby, oh wait bobby columbi bobby columbi I'm bobby columbi yeah. he was the drummer with blood sweat and tears right yes so what ended up happening is uh uh jocko's wife said um to bobby uh well, you know, he's the greatest bass player in the world. That's something that you don't say too lightly, but the truth of the matter, he was. For but, sure. you know, I mean, and Bobby basically yeah. said, well, I got to check this out. And uh, they signed him, so apparently they knew he wasn't oh, too absolutely. far out. 
So uh, yeah, uh, and that first the first song was um, was Donna Lee. Yeah, and it's, it was just Jocko and uh, Don Elias on percussion. Uh -huh. so, you know, Jocko's playing the, the melody like a saxophone player. Sure. And then he soloed on it, and then just to throw it, you know, it's like, hey, everybody. Then he modulated it up a half step, and it, even though, you know, you're kind of playing the bass and you can kind of, you know, just move up a half step, but still, he figured out all these other harmonics to accompany himself. Yeah. and. Everybody, whenever when I heard that, I lost my mind. Yeah, everybody's jaw yeah, dropped. Like, what? You know, like, What's that? He took it. I mean, this this is early on, so he took it where nobody else did. Can and I then, take uh, a quick look at this case? So, so I notice it's got the uh, um, epoxy right. over the fingerboard, so it looks like the frets the frets were were um, the, were cut out. Yeah, it was to put fretted, the frets. It was a and then they basement. inlaid they inlaid some sort of a soft wood where the frets would be, and then they put a finish over it. And I also noticed it's got the old saddles that have you know that are, have the different ridges on it. Mm -hmm. If you can see, and then back in the early '60s, individual mutes. They had they had individual mutes here. Then Jocko took all that out. But the other cool thing is, it has the grounding plate. Instead of it going inside, it went from underneath this pickup to the bridge to ground it. Yep. And and they kept it on the outside. So everything is true to now, all the, the way wear they is made kind it. of strategic to yes. the base that Jocko had. Yeah, um, they kind of tried to duplicate a lot of the wear and all that so it's uh, heavily relict but really cool but it, it really reminds me back in my uh, youth in Miami and uh, the one guy who yeah. can do it some justice yeah. is Roberto Valley he kills it let's uh, hear I, what I have doing. to preface this I am no Jocko I cannot shine Jocko's shoes but I do love to play fretless because I come from the upright bass mm -hmm. so to play fretless is you know fairly easy but Jocko had a vision and took the electric bass where That's nobody right. took it to before. And I don't think that there's anybody who revolutionized and, and made something so personal that just changed changed electric bass. Absolutely. So And the thing about Jocko is no matter what jazzy stuff he's playing, voicings and harmonics and all that, every time it had a sick killer groove to it. Absolutely. R and B like the James yeah. Brown kinda Pocket City. Yeah. So, pocket Central. So yeah. let's uh, take it out there. Okay. Well, show us a few pockets. I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. Let's go. All right. Hey now, this is Roberto Valley here. I'm on the showroom, in the showroom of Norm's Rare Guitars, and I have this lovely 2018 custom shop bass, a tribute to you know the late great Jaco Pastorius, and it's Jaco's you know in, in every detail and. Yeah, it, it has the uh, the very, very nicely worn in uh, neck. And right now I have both pickups on full. And you c can almost tell if you, you know, can play. Um, it doesn't even sound like a fretless bass, you know. Being that it is a fretless bass, you know. That's why you want to have a fretless to be able to do that sort of thing. Jocko sound, you just ease off this neck pickup and you go from this and that phenomenon occurs.
Fretless bass, you know, it's not for the for the faint of heart, but you can really get expressive and you can do anything you want to do with it. But I always keep a fretless in my uh, in my arsenal, and this would make a great asset to any any player who wants to get that really uh, direct upper mid range bite in you know with a band when you're cutting a song or playing live, and plus when you add this neck pickup in. It sounds like a fretted instrument, so this bass can do anything. I'd like to ask my friend Michael Lemo to come over here and play with me a little bit. Hey, Roberto. Hey, now. How we doing? Um, we're doing. We're doing really good. I'm just gonna take my little cheat Notes? sheet written on an envelope. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. You know. You gotta have them sometimes. Yeah. I'd rather use what little brain I have to actually play the instrument, you know? Hell yeah. All right, we're gonna play uh, Your Mother Should Know. All right. Ready? How does that go? One, yep. two, three, four. fretless yeah so again this is a 2018 custom shop fender jazz bass tribute to Jocko Pastorius it's Jocko in every way but the player you know but hey um, I gave it my college try and please come and check this bass out Michael thanks so much for joining me oh, it's always a pleasure thank you man thank you thank you we'll see you here at Norm's Rare Guitars come and check this bass and all the guitars in this beautiful shop out see you soon Hey, wait. Bye. Hey now, uh, what? what do we got going now? Oh, what, you... what about Lemo's record? You know, Lemo oh. <laughs> has got the Blue Comet record. Oh, yes. And yeah. you have a new tune. Yeah. What's it called? I wish I knew. <laughs> no, it's called For Your Love. For Yo Love. Yeah. But I didn't know. It's it, it, We recorded it a while ago on one of the sessions after Blue Comet, and... Uh, it seems that they want to send it to radio, so we'll see what happens. Beautiful, man. We're, we're label mates, aren't we? We are. Woodward, Woodward, Woodward Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. I got a single coming out on 9-11. Paul Brown. Yes. Right? Cool. Well, Paul, yes. Paul mixed it. I produced it. And I was actually playing with Paul today for a song for him and a few other artists, too. So no excuse for me. I, I can't say I'm rusty because I've been... No, I've you sound amazing all always. Thank you. Always. They sound great, and I'll take my cut. Thank you, guys. Always. Thank you. <laughs> Checks in the mail. All right. All right. I want a cut. <laughs> okay, bye. Yeah, <laughs>